Good afternoon and welcome to today's episode of Speaking the Truth About Money with Martin Coward and Joy the Wise Woman. I am both Martin Coward and Joy the Wise Woman. Joy the Wise Woman is my spiritual name. And as you get to know me and the things we talk about, she's the one doing everything. <laughs> and Martin has learned to get out of the way and let her rule because she is the divine. And if I can close my mind enough to open my heart, she guides me into a beautiful and exciting world. And that's what I want for you. And that's what the world, that's the world of the heart space. So that's what we're here about today. We're all about looking at what are those things that are getting in our way? What are those objects in our head that we need to clear out so that we can truly step into our, our genius, into our infinite power and superpower so we can make a difference in the world? And I'm so excited today because my guest is Kyrie Var. She is my mindset coach. So I'm so excited when she agreed to come on my show and share what she teaches me and what I get to learn from her because she is a she's one of the best I've ever met in the world of mindset space. And so what I want to start with, Kyrie, is that you weren't always in mindset space. I don't believe like any of us. No, we had to have some kind of shift in our own mindset in order to get here. We had some kind of realization. And what I've understood is that when we realize the truth of who we are, we cannot unrealize it. We and then we have to develop a mindset that goes along with that truth. So, what I'd like to start out with, if you would, today is start out with a little bit anything I want to hear your story. But mm -hmm. what I like to yeah, think about who was Kyrie before she had this mindset shift before she realized the truth that, that she was this brilliant co-creator of the universe yeah and there was nothing that she could not do and she and and, and she what tell us a little of that story and then what was your life like before what was the what was the moment what was the event that kind of epiphany bridge if you will that sort of ah this yeah. is the truth and this is who i am and it's so funny as you're asking this i'm i'm feeling compelled to share something that you I haven't told to a lot of people, but when I was a kid, when I was very young, probably eight, seven, eight years old, I started having a lot of these dreams where I would meet someone and they would always tell me, just ask, and it is always given. So from a very young age, I had these, I knew that there was a puzzle and I had to figure it out, but I had no idea what the end result was going to be. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So the, a lot of my life was a quest to figure out how to get everything. I was told many times by the same individual whose face I've never seen that whatever you ask, it is always given. Since I was a very young age, like too young to make this stuff up. <laughs> and so I spent a lot of my young adult life trying to figure out but how come then sometimes when i ask for something i get it and sometimes i don't ah that was and i have a lot of very specific moments even one where one day when i was opening the door i think to my room and stuff was happening in my life and i remember stopping there and and just going through my mind like but how come it works and sometimes it does it? How come sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't? So this was like my 20s. This was my teenage years. This was my 20s <laughs> trying to figure out why does it work sometimes and why does it not? And I know for sure that it's supposed to. So something's not, there's something I haven't figured out. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the quest started. But really what defines for me who I am now, which is constantly evolving, constantly expanding, and I absolutely love it, versus me trying to figure stuff out and struggling, was actually getting extremely sick between 2014 and 2017. I got extremely sick and no one could figure out what it was. And it was very debilitating. It was an illness that prevented me a lot of days to get out of bed because I couldn't walk. And it's something that no matter where I went, I tried to find help here in North America, in Europe, in the Middle East, in Africa, and I couldn't find, I couldn't, no one could figure out what it was. And one day I remember I was in my grandmaster's because I'm, I'm a Kung Fu practitioner. I've been practicing martial arts since I was a kid. And one day I was um, in my, in my grandmaster's office 
And for some reason, he mentioned he asked me questions about my health. And I was like, oh, I'm I'm okay. It's just, you know, the physical, just like the past couple of years, it's difficult. And he said, you know, you're I gave him a little bit of the symptoms. And he said, you know, you're you're sick because you're ang angry. Like that's the reason why you're sick. And I was like, what do you mean I am angry? I'm like the most joyous person on earth. I'm always smiling and having fun. It's like, what what do you mean I'm angry? It's like you're angry. So you have to figure that uh, that stuff out. And that started, that was in 2016, I believe. And that started like a really intense quest of me turning back inward versus mm -hmm. trying to find out on the outside, turning back inward yeah. to figure out where I was angry. And I realized that I was actually very angry and very resentful of a whole lot of things that I didn't know. And so doing a lot of that inner world type of type of work, and I didn't have anyone to really teach me, but I was pulling from what I learned from my grandmaster, what I learned from the Sufi world, because my family is, you know, that's where uh, um, in terms of religion or, you know, philosophies, that's where it comes from. And pulling from those things, what could help me let go of the resentment. And of course, having a lot of conversations with myself, but it, and I started to see my physical body getting better and better. I stopped all medication and completely healed. So that completely transformed everything. Completely. Yeah, I love that. And I think we all have to go through some form of the dark night of the soul. Yeah. And uh, thank God I had my spiritual teacher. It was me being here on the edge of bankruptcy, thinking that living a, with a fear driven belief that I had to be rich and successful or I wasn't lovable. And when my business began to fall apart, I had so much fear that I was I wasn't a lovable person anymore. You know, because that's something I had been carrying all my life. So I needed this dark night to like you needed that sickness to point you in the to the door of where the where the key is. You know, the key is behind that door over there. The he, the key is behind your angry, your angry, yeah. and your resentment. And that is exactly what we all need. And we need we need someone like a grandmaster or a spiritual teacher. It's like, wait a minute, let's go look at that. You find out what you're angry about. You find out where you got this belief, Martin, that you had to be rich and successful. You weren't lovable and unpack that and find the truth in that. And you'll be healed. Yeah. You'll heal that wound. So that's exactly. a wonderful story because we all and that and that's great for Eric because we, 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 we never we never like the dark night when we're in it because it seems it's yes. sick. We feel bad. We're, we give ourselves a pity party. We just do all kinds of bad things. But. The, the, the best thing about that is what you what we're sharing now is that get one get somebody to help you you cannot get through it alone mm -hmm. and get somebody who's been there before you to help guide you through it to help you see the light in the darkness and yes. i think that's what you found in that in that clarity around your anger was your you, you saw oh wait a minute I, I, i'm pretending not to be angry which was not true Exactly. All that energy you were spending to try to be, to look and be positive and be joyful was exhausting because exactly. inside you were angry, right? Yeah. And I didn't even know. And that's it. You know, when you go through, I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but I remember in 2017, there was two weeks in the month of July where I felt like I had to, quite, I was questioning everything. It's like I had this light bulb moment about myself, about why I'm here. And then for a period of two weeks, everything that I believed I knew was shattered. And so I had no idea. I remember so specifically, I had no idea what to believe anymore. And so it went from here's Kyrie's world, you know, for 20 some years, 25 years, whatever, 35 years, here's what the world was. And all of a sudden, I had, I remember, I, I remember some books that I was reading and things at that, and I just had these huge aha moments, but it shattered everything that I believed to be true. And for two weeks, I was in limbo. What, what do I believe now? <laughs> if all of that stuff mm. is not true and it's not serving me now, what do I believe? And it was the most uncomfortable and the weirdest place I have ever been. I, that I, I so relate because once, you, I, yes. because once I had this realization, once Joy came in my life and she says, you know, she, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so relieved. I feel so good. I'm so enlightened that all of a sudden I, it was like I crashed into the old Martin died. 
yeah. like a wave in the sand. And now I'm deep, deep, deep in the essence of myself. And I didn't know yes. who I was. Yes. And I was afraid and I was alone. And I was like, that was a dark. And, and I was like, oh my God, this is darker than the dark. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, and who, who do I talk to about this stuff? Yeah. And that's what I was like. I know I'm not that anymore. I'm not that big old wave that was out there ro rooting his horn. Yeah, that died in the in, in, on the shore. But who am I? Yes. And what I've had to learn is to is get in touch with that deep essence of of, the, of presence, and I stay close to that today. I stay very, very close to that heart space. Exactly. That's heart space. I mean, the ocean is the heart space. The, exactly. the ocean is the presence of the divine within all of us. And I find myself day after day, if I build a little wave, I have to go back and put the wave back in the, the water because the wave I built yesterday isn't necessarily going to serve me today. Exactly. You know? same, same thing. That, that It was my first time being in that space where... There's no beliefs and there's no stories and there is just nothing. <laughs> right. There's that there's and, that Zen Buddhist nothingness. Right? Exactly. It was my first time and it was very scary. But now I find myself constantly looking to get back in that state on the on a daily basis. Because that's where there is no struggle. If I and I keep my, my husband and I, we keep talking because we went through all of these phases together, right? right. Like, and because I was shattering everything I knew. It also had an impact on him having to shatter everything because we're in this relationship and the kids. So we went through this transition between 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, yeah. where it was very difficult, but it shattered a lot of our identities and how we relate to each other. And now just realizing how much less we struggle right. just because there is less stories to hold on to. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I love this. This is this is why we're here together. And why we work. That's what, that's what heart space is. Yes. Heart space is that presence. And when we're in heart space, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm not trying to be right. I'm not trying to do anything but just show up and be with love and gratitude for this wild thing called the human experience. Exactly. And see what I can do to bring more people into this space. Because that's the thing. Once we realize, really, all it was was holding on to an old story, mm -hmm. holding on to an old false belief that I needed to be this in order to be loved. Once I let that go and said, I don't need to do anything. I just need to be still and listen to that divine spirit. She will guide me all along the way. Yeah. Exactly. That's something that I noticed. And one thing too, I remember when I was sick, I, I was, there are days where I was very angry at God, Martin. I was very oh, angry at the universe. I was, mm, why yeah. did you do this to me? Yes, yes. <laughs> there were days where I was very angry and days where I would try and bribe, you know, but I remember being, because I couldn't sleep for three and a half years. So a lot of talking to, you know, whoever's out there. And <laughs> I, there was a moment where I was so desperate that I was always in the, 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 in this like programming and repetition of if I'm able to be well one day, I'm going to spend the rest of my days serving other humans. Like that was what would get me through it. I was like, maybe if I, you know, negotiate something, it's going to work out for me. But now, and, and when I got better, that's what I started doing, right? I was like, who can I help, et cetera. Yeah, that's... One thing I've noticed, however, over the, the past few years is me trying to look outside for people to help is not helping people. For me to help others, I just need to focus on the inner world. And when I do, oh my God, that is, that is exactly what I have recently discovered. Yeah. That yeah. I, you know, it's, it, you, you, it's not there. It's it, everything happens in here. Everything, everything happens in the heart. Exactly. Even this conversation, it's literally happening on the inside. It's just, right. you know, reflecting like this. We're just putting it out there. In, yeah, exactly. You know, be, oh, exactly. And when I focus on just raising my own vibrational energy, I'm going to attract the people out there because my language in the world is going to be that. And we yeah. talk a lot about conviction marketing in UE, and that's the power of conviction. When you're out there telling your story, when you're telling what you, why it's important that I bring you into heart space. Yeah. Exactly. Why it's important. Cause I want you to live a life of significance. I want you to, I want the people to show up who want to live in heart space, who see that how much more powerful they are. Like you've discovered, cause there's no conflict. There's no, I need to be right. I need to be, I just need to love you. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and me. Exactly. Yeah. I love and one it. thing, and one thing too, um, that I'm again, you know, when when you just learn to shut up, <laughs> when yeah. we learn to just shut up and just listen, we find that things get so much easier. And for me, realizing that the default is growth. The default is things working out. The default is the abundance, is the prosperity and anything else. So that's the reason why I was being told since a kid, since I was a kid that everything that you ask for, you actually get it. It's mm -hmm. already in creation. But what actually stops us is just us, the stories, etc. So by constantly throughout the day, and I set myself reminders on my phone, etc., to, to just go back, to just learn to shut up. To just learn to not. Yeah, I love it. Because you're then right. when you do, everything else that you're working towards just shows up in your experience without the struggle. And I just absolutely. Yeah. Love that. I, and it's so much more fun. Just the other Wednesday this week, I, I found myself in the, this is, this is, they'll love the story. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I want you to come back and come back and tell the story about one of your big breakthroughs with one of your clients. But I'm going to share exactly that as I was, I was working on something and, it, and all of a sudden I was getting and seen it's like i want to get this done i want to get this done i want to get this done and joy says martin joy the wise one it's a beautiful day outside you see that chair in the front yard i want you to close off your computer right this minute i want you to go out and sit in that chair and get still and listen but i got i told you martin yes. go out there it's not about doing it's about being i want you to be still and listen to me for a little bit. Uh, go out and see the beautiful trees. Go out and be in the spring. See what that feels like. Quiet the mind and open the heart. I did exactly what she said, kind of angrily. Okay, you tell me I'm going to go out there and do it. And I'll tell you, and I was sitting there, well, here I am. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what now? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> yes. She said, I know, be still and listen. I mean, really get still on this. And all of a sudden, I began to see the world differently. I began to understand that I am I am that loving presence. And, and about an hour later, all of a sudden, the things that I was struggling to get done just became just just started just started happening. Yeah. Just started happening. And it was all about who I was being more than who I was what I was trying to do. Yeah. And that's a hard lesson to learn for us because we're spirit, and spirit does spirit does in being in stillness. It doesn't do it by yeah, the mind telling it what to do. So, I'd love to hear a little bit about. So that's your. That was, so now that you you're you're bringing me and other people into this world of uh, understanding of how powerful we are and masters we are. Tell us. Tell. Give us an example of a story of one of your favorite stories, of uh, where you've taken a client through a breakthrough and, uh, and and really made a difference in their lives. So people get a sense of what you do and how you help people. Yeah, and it's so funny because. When you look at my job description, what I do is I'm a business strategist. I, you know, I help entrepreneurs go from zero or a hundred thousand to million and multi-million dollars in business. So that is what I do for a living. But when you look at how I do it, I would say maybe 20% of it is strategy. 80% of how I do it is actually not in what I'm talking about. It happens before the call. It happens during the call in terms of who I'm being. I always get into every single call extremely silent just so I can hear the stuff that they're not telling me. And so many, many times when I'm talking to a client, just because I'm so focused on just listening to the other stuff, not the making money and, you know, the struggle with their team members, et cetera, because that is those are symptoms. Those are like the stories that we put out there, yeah. but it's just, it's not the real thing that's happening. But a lot of times, Martin, I'll actually just see images of things that are happening. Right. And I know for sure that it's, it's just from becoming so much more intuitive by shutting up internally. And so I remember I was talking to this client and she had been struggling for a bit in terms of you know her business and what she wanted to do with it. And I remember we, we were on this call and I was giving her strategy ideas. Here's what you should do. And every single time she would just, she always had an objection to it. There was always something, a reason why that wouldn't work. And at a certain point I had to stop her and I told her, you know, there is for some reason, now you tell me, maybe I'm completely, you know, 
out, maybe it has nothing to do with what's going on here, but I literally can see a wall between the two of you and you're playing ping pong with me. Like there's something that you're so scared of that every single idea that I'm throwing your away, you're just, you know, pushing it to the side. And we start, I started just asking her a couple of questions and started asking her about her husband, which she doesn't talk about often. And turned out the reason why she was struggling with her business was because she was afraid that if she got too successful, her husband was going to leave her. Now, if you're trying to build a business with the fear and that story behind everything that's saying, if yeah. I get successful, my husband's going to leave me, you're never going to get successful. So that's what, those are the things that I love to look at. And I love to tell people, Hey, you know, you're going to be a millionaire this year. Every single person that I told it to Martin, they did it every single person. And the only reason is the, the only reason they do is that at the moment where I tell them, they just believe it. Yeah. Right. So one, so that's what I love the most about what I do. I've helped people go from like completely change their lives. I know it's not necessarily me doing the thing, but it's just me sh shutting up enough that I can hear something about what's going on and create that mind mental br breakthrough or the emotion shifting something in their paradigm, inspiring them in some way. And so just with that, they go on and completely change you know, their, their trajectory mm -hmm. It's the best, the most fulfilling thing ever. Isn't it though, when people realize the truth of who they are, that, you know, they got these holy stories, you know, when they, re and they realize that they're actually these powerful, creative, yes. particularly women and, and gay men, you know, I work kind of in, in, in the, in the, in, yes. in the face of gay men. And, I, and I'm really working to, I want what Kelly's doing for women. Kelly Roach is our, is our coach. We, mm -hmm. Kyrie works with, with Ke on Kelly's team and she's my mindset coach as part of that team. And I'm part of that group. And what she's doing is she is creating a movement, I believe, of women stepping into their authenticity, into their power, into their authentic yes. powers. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of, I like, like say Hillary Clinton, for example, I got to know Hillary Clinton very well when I worked at Ground Zero. She was the Senator of, of New York at the time and we became good friends. She was most outstanding. Talk about a a really heart centered <laughs> civil mm -hmm. servant, you know, servant. She's that, but she doesn't come across that way in the world because she's, she, she, she feels too vulnerable when she's that, when she, when she, when she's collaborative and loving and nurturing and all those divine yeah. feminine traits that make her so powerful. And she would, but because in, in the world of trying to compete with men, she was yeah. competing with male using male characteristics, which made her inauthentic. And I think, and, and I'm not blaming her, but that's, that's, she was ahead of her time. And like what, what, what we're learning and what you're learning, and I'm learning for gay men and we're for, for, for women is no step into those divine superpowers, step into oh, those man. divine characteristics that make you so powerful. And for men, I'm telling you this, when you're, when you're, loving and you're nurturing and you're vulnerable and you're collaborative and you do all those things that make you so powerful from the inside combined with an exterior that's handsome and masculine and male that's a powerful combination for change it is it is absolutely and people are attracted to that so that's one that's again another reason why i feel like we were not taught the right skills growing up we were taught about you know, we were taught to look out there to solve any of our issues mm -hmm. and to dream, etc. It was like all about looking on the outside and then trying to become charismatic by, you know, not being authentic. Whereas what I notice is that when people are working on their in, 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 on their inner world, when they're working on building the courage and the love and the, all of those elements, you become magnetic. You become magnetic to the people who love you people who don't know you, but they're in search for that type of energy, they become attracted to you. If you have a business, your clientele grows. If you have, you know what I mean? Like everything starts to become attracted to you because of what's happening on the inside. Right. So 
in everything that I do, like that is my main goal is to ra radiate that all the time. And I find that I then attract people like you and other people who are kind of doing the same thing. Right. And it does create an amazing movement. That is exa that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. When we raise, like Nikola Tesla, Tesla says that if you want to understand the universe and your relationship to it, under everything is about energy, frequency, and vibration. Yeah. And if we bring our vibration, and the highest vibrational frequency is, un is the creative power of unconditional love. It's the creative energy of love. Uh, in the world that, that transcends the human mind. And that and that's what we're talking about. That energy force, they call it the quantum field today. Jesus mm -hmm. called it the kingdom of heaven. I call it heart space. Mm -hmm. And it's all the same thing. It's all that power force that is what we are. And when we can step into that and let go of all that stuff and clear, clear our mind, God, there's nothing. And then we begin, we're in that vibrational field yeah. and people want, begin to that's what the law of attraction is really about it's not well if i if i if i want a nice mercedes in my front yard if i just think positive thoughts i'll bring the energy and all of a sudden i'll have a mercedes you might but i i, I don't think that's really what is intended the intention is to bring our vibrational frequency up into that higher range of of love and, and empathy uh, and compassion and practice and then people oh my god I want that in my life. I want to feel love and compassion and empathy and connected to the world. Yes, that's something that's so true. When I discovered the law of attraction, I was like, okay, this is cool. This kind of explains the stuff that I was told when I was a kid, but I was like, but something's missing though, because it's still looking on the outside and then just dreaming about, and I was like, something is not working here. Something's not complete. And the thing that solved all of it, and I know is the solution is exactly what you're talking about is remembering to forget, remembering to just go back to that empty space of love all the time. And when, because when we forget to forget, we go back to all of the stories yes. automatically, right? And things we start struggling again. So just constantly staying in that state of loving and, you know, silence as much as possible mm -hmm. and everything else becomes so much easier. And even things that I find that I used to be very focused on what, you know, what I would love to have and what I would love to get and what I would love to experience. And even sometimes when I'm teaching mindset, I find that people are very focused on that aspect still in my mind. And I don't know if this makes sense to you, but in my mind, when it comes to this spiritual our spiritual evolution, we go from victimhood which is where I was, right? Victimhood and blaming and resentment because we feel like everything is mm -hmm. happening against us to the law of attraction, which is where we feel like we're starting to gain power of, over what we have, right? Mm -hmm. But then that is just step two. Like that next level is when we realize that, oh, it's not about all of the stuff that I think I want because all the things we think we want, it's still stories. It's still things that we're holding on to, but going and letting go of all of that, then the stuff that you love and the stuff that are supposed to be birthed through you just come out anyway. And it is so much more fulfilling than dreaming of a Tesla and, you know, get trying to get yeah. into the energetic vibration of a Tesla. It's like, no, there's probably something even better that you could get, but it's being open to that. Yeah. I think it's being open to the fact that you, you can have a Tesla if you want one. Yeah. That's that is it. I because I have everything. I I, I am the, I am the creator of the universe. There's nothing I yeah. can have, you know, <laughs> including a million dollars. Yeah. You know, once we get into that space. So let me ask you. We got a few more minutes left. And and, and uh, sometimes when people hear people like us talking about what we talk about, it just sounds so woo woo. It just sounds so like what? What are they talking about? You just you know you'll manifest it. What is one thing that people could 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 do? They could just say, maybe, maybe Kyrie and Martin have got something here. Maybe what could they listen to? What could they what what's the one simple thing that they could take away from this podcast and go do immediately to get an aha? Wait a minute, maybe they got something going on there. Mm. And are you asking in terms of something to reach a goal that they have like yeah, just to get out, just to get out of the negative mindset mm. and into a positive mindset because that the negative mindset is a lower vibrational frequency yes and it, and it, and it makes you feel bad mm -hmm. and we know we're in one because we're angry and we're 
You know, I was getting in one the other day and I was like, I couldn't get this to work. We get into this, we're in a lower vibrational field where we begin oh, to yeah. a victim and all that kind of stuff. What do we, what can people do? What, what would you recommend? To the, okay. I'm in, I'm in this lower vibrational frequency right now. I, I'm not very productive here. Yes. But if I do this, this is a way I can quickly move myself up into that oh, higher yeah. vibrational frequency. Yes. And this is what I do personally. This is what I tell my children to do. This is what I tell clients to do when I'm on a call with them and they're not in the headspace. I feel, I find that people forget what it feels like to feel great. Mm. And when you feel great, you are actually in the energy of love. Right. right? So one thing that I always tell people when they're struggling aka, is what typically brings you joy? Mm -hmm. You need to stop everything you're doing right now and go back to that. That is the easiest way to flip the switch and go back to whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you, you know, makes you feel so much better. Then from that headspace, everything else that you're trying to deal with will become so much easier. So mm -hmm. if I can get, I've asked clients on, on, on calls, what makes you, what makes you happy? And a client told me once, she was like, I love to sing, but I just realized I haven't sung in 10 months because of COVID, right? And I was like, you need to put that in your calendar and have 20 minutes a day where you just do that. Right. And it completely, like, she opened up. She started smiling again. So remember what it feels like to feel good. Remember what it feels like to yeah. be happy. Yeah, it was like, it was, and it, it just, think of something that you really, like the other day, I was like, you know, I knew I was frustrated. I saw that chair out in my front yard on the beautiful day. I said, I, you know, I bet I'd feel a lot better sitting here first with this computer. But I just went out there and sat down in there with some iced tea and just exactly. enjoyed the neighborhood and exactly. see what happens. Yeah. And, all of a sudden, you're right. and I felt, and when I felt better, my vibration went back up. And also when you were in that higher vibrational frequency, it opens up something within the brain that actually allows us yeah. to be most our most creative and productive self. And that's what really it's all about. And that's how you become a millionaire maker because you become yeah. realize yeah. that you're very creative and you can begin to think of ideas and ways to actually make a difference in the world from that creative genius in us, I think. Yeah, exactly. Everyone calls me the time bender at the in the company because I coined that term. And honestly, because I always tell people productivity is a, it's an inner game. It's about how you're feeling. That's what determines if you're going to be productive or not. And for me, mm -hmm. bending time and crushing any goal like very easily is all about just feeling amazing about what, anything I'm doing. If I'm not feeling great, I'm going to stop that thing and go feel amazing. And it always, always, always. So always. It's, and it's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And if you combine feeling great with taking some action, that building that mm -hmm. momentum, you always end up. Yeah. Going. Yeah, to. because we get into our head. We think we think we got to go out and do all these th all these tasks in order yeah. to become a millionaire and become this. It's not about the doing; it's about being. And when we do it, when whatever we're doing, if it's shifting our being to being in love and being feeling good and being in high vibration, that's how we create a world. Exactly. Isn't that wonderful? So. It is half hour. I can't believe it, I, how, how quickly they go. And I've been always looking forward to this time with you. How was the best play for people who want to, and I recommend if you would want to get some, some insight into what's going on in your world and how you can manifest and become a millionaire. Because it, 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 that's the thing about us coaches is that when you help see the millionaire, the $7 million millionaire in me, I'm now working and acting and doing what a $7 million is. I was making a decision the other day about something. And I thought, now, am I making a decision as poor Martin or am <laughs> I making a decision as this is a $7 million CEO running a business? Yeah. What would I, what would that guy do? I said, well, that guy would, would buy this because it's something that's going to help this business grow. So, so, and, and it will come, but, but I had to go through that little mental yes. game to say, well, what would the seven million dollar CEO do versus what's the guy who's struggling trying to make his make the ends meet? Because yeah. both of those could be realities, but one of them is just a, a moment in time and, mm -hmm. and a mindset. So that's just what I wanted to, to say. And so I would say that Kyrie's one of the best because she's really helped me to see the millionaire in me and become a millionaire maker myself. Because that's because and the reason is not not so that I can have money to have a, a Tesla, although it'd be kind of fun. But the reason yeah. is because I want to make an impact on the world. I want to world. I want to. I want to bring my skills, my love, my joy, in, and, and 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 that abundance it is money is 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 a powerful vehicle yeah. source 
for living that life of abundance and being making a significant impact. And when I begin to see the world that way, it's not that sort of selfish narcissistic, I want to be a millionaire for me. It's I want to build something big enough for the world to appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I always, and I, th these are the things that I talk about because you ask like where people can find me. I think I'm the only one on social media whose name is Kyrie Var. So <laughs> you can find me under that name on Facebook or Instagram uh, is where I have most of my content. It's a lot of content related to business, but also bringing wisdom back into business, right? So those philosophies that actually make us greater human beings and and have a have us have a greater impact on the world so that's the best way to find me yes and if, i would highly recommend you finding her because she is really truly a gift to this world and uh, she's very open and generous with her heart and her sharing and her information and wisdom and wisdom i like the word wisdom and, and i because i think we, wisdom is different than knowledge wisdom is is reminding people of the truth of what they already know yeah, exactly. That's no. yeah. That's what's really coming up for me these days. It's all about bringing the wisdom back to yeah. all the things that we do. Yeah, everything that we do. So thank you for that. Hold one second. I want to give a little plug in for where people can find me. Yeah. Uh, I have two Facebook groups. Well, you can find me by, by Martin Coward on Facebook, social media too. And, and mm -hmm. at TikTok, it's Martin Coward, Martin Coward Coaching. That's me. And you can find me that way. And I'd love to, if you find me and you want to have a conversation, all you got to do is send me a direct message and say, Martin, I heard the podcast and I want to know more about you and I'll be happy to get back with you and we'll have a conversation. That's just how, because that's what we're here for, right? We're here to help people move into heart space. So if that's something you want to do, give me a, send me a direct message. But I've also got a couple of Facebook groups that you might be interested in. I've got one called the Financial Mystics Sanctuary. And that's a, that's a Facebook group for everybody to look at the mystical, the spiritual principles of wisdom to what, Kyrie just said about how do we how do we manifest how we how do we have successful businesses how do we solve problems from the spiritual perspective using those those truths and that's for everybody and then I and because I work with gay bi and trans men I have another Facebook group called Financial Heart Space for Gay Bi and Trans Men and that's for us because I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place for us to work with our with our own specific types of wounding that we got as gay men growing up and yeah. it just wouldn't make sense to someone really outside of that world. So if that's you and you want some real, you know, understanding what it's like to be, to have limiting beliefs and to have sense of not being good enough and always trying to compete with that, the normal boys we all try to do, come join us over there in financial heart space for gay transgender. And we'll, we'll show you there's a better truth. There's a better way. And you're a really powerful guy just because of your queer nature. So join us over there. If you, if you would like to find out more about that. So, and that's financial heart space for gay, bi and transgender men. So thank you, Kyrie, so much for being. Thank you so much for having uh, me. I knew this was going to fly by way too fast. Hold on one second. Let me just close this out and we'll get, we'll, we'll just have a conversation quick backstage. All and right. everyone, thank you so much for being here and may love and prosperity prevail.